Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo Cunny Corso. So I'm here with Velocity and my girl Patina. You get the baby, Velocity. You get the baby. So Velocity is um, just, you know, teaching Patina the ropes. Showing her that's a bottle cleaner. Who's who's yeah, that's a bottle cleaner. It fell off the counter. Can you can you see if that's kimchi out there bark? I'm pretty sure it's her. Oh, you got it. Give it give me that. You better give me that. All right. Um so I wanted to do a video today to talk about some stuff um that I think is really important about when you pick up, uh, when you get, when you get a puppy from a breeder and kind of like going forward. So, um, one of the big things that I've had problems with in the past, whenever I would have litters is that, is that, um, even though I will put the stickers on the vet record for the, um, puppies, the, um, the vet will act like it's not enough. Uh, like, like they have to redo it. Let me see. I'm trying to find if I have any filled out here. I'll just show you. I, will you go grab me one? So I'm going to show you what they look like when they're filled out. Um, where are you going on a puppy that, that I filled out and then just, and then I just ended up keeping here. So, Mm. Alright, so here's an example um, of my pamphlet. This folds up. And so I'll put um, the information, the date of birth, my information, um, my worming treatment. And then on the back here, I'll have the stickers for the vaccinations because that's what we, um, that's what, that's what everyone uses. That's what those stickers are for, um, for the um, vet record. And um, goes like this, and so, and so anyway, um, I've had multiple people who've purchased dogs from me in the past tell me that the vet didn't trust the vaccination that I gave. They don't know that it that I know about the proper protocol as far as keeping the temperature correct, like blah blah blah, like, and they they say they want to redo it now. I'm going to tell you why it's foolish. Um, so the way that puppy vaccinations work is that um, the mother's antibodies, they um, protect the puppy. And then the mother's antibodies wear off at a different rate per each individual puppy. And the mother's antibodies are what prevent the vaccination that you give from actually working. The mother's antibodies basically come in and cancel it out. And so what you're waiting for is for each puppy's antibodies to wear off so that you can vaccinate your puppy. And so there's studies that show that um, we give our first vaccination at six weeks and there's a certain amount of percentage of puppies that will actually respond to that. So there are some puppies that will be protected from that first vaccination, but not all of them. And since we don't really have a very easy way to test if your puppy has responded, we continue to give vaccinations every three weeks until the studies have shown that all the puppies will respond. And that's usually around 15, 16 weeks old um, whenever the, the last vaccination is given. And it is assumed that even if your puppy was one of the last ones to respond, that your puppy is also safe. So regardless of whether or not your puppy was vaccinated at six weeks, it wouldn't change the vaccination schedule for your puppy going forward. Okay? Velocity, you are being too loud. And so it wouldn't, it wouldn't change the vaccination schedule going forward. And that's why it's, it's, it's misleading whenever vets will say, well, we don't trust it. We need to do, we want to do it over again. There's no such thing as doing it over again. You've already missed six weeks. By the time that you, 
By the time that you get the dog, it's eight weeks of age. So you can't go back in time and do that six week vaccination. All you can do is continue to go forward, which means you'll still need the same amount of vaccines um, as you would have if you had not vaccinated at six weeks. So that's a very deceitful, um, devious way that a lot of vets will try to get more money out of you. Um, and believe me, they want to get more money out of you. Another thing that I've seen them doing now is they give you free flea and tick medication as well as free heartworm for your first visit. And that's because they want you to put your dog on that stuff. They want you to um, buy it because it makes them a lot of money. Now, the last guy, he got a puppy out of the Mona litter that just went out um, at, at Reese's house. And that puppy, um, it's, it, it is fall. That puppy has never been outside. Mosquitoes are now gone. So the, the, for the vet to give that person heartworm medication is, um, it's unnecessary. And, and, and in my opinion, it is, um, predatory. It is financially predatory because there is no risk right now anyway, period. Cause there's not any mosquitoes out right now. So, um, having said that mosquito larvae, um, you don't need to give your dog monthly heartworm medication. And the reason for that is because mosquito larvae take, I, I believe it's six to seven months to mature to the point that they um, can actually go up into the heart. And so every month you give your dog a heartworm pill, that heartworm pill is designed to kill heartworm larva that could be in your dog's bloodstream if your dog was exposed to heartworm. Savannah, Sorry, I'm trying to get her I know, but it's loud. It's echoing in here. And so, um, and so anyway, so you, so th because the larva stay larva for so long, um, I wanted six to seven months, but let's say I don't have the science right in front of me or, or the literature right in front of me, but let's say, let's give them the benefit that let's say that it's every five months, which I know it's not, but let's say that it's every five months. Then in reality, all you should really be doing is giving a heartworm pill every five months. That's it. Every five months, that's all you would need because that would still be killing it in the larval stage. But they don't do that because there's not enough money in that. Why treat the dog correctly whenever they could get you to give it monthly, right? And so they, and so they overdo it with the monthly stuff. Now, having said that, you don't actually even need to give your dog a heartworm pill every five months. You can actually just have your dog tested and see if it has heartworms. And if it does test positive, since you tested in the last five months, you know that it's still within the larval stage and that you can safely give a heartworm pill without complications. The reason that they don't like to give heartworm pills unless a dog has been tested negative is because in the event that a dog has a serious mature infection that has actually migrated to the heart, those worms are dangerous because when they die, they will clog the arteries of the heart and cause a, um, a heart attack. So that's why you don't want to give a heartworm pill um, just willy nilly to a dog at any time. But if you know and you've been scheduling these tests every five months and you know that heartworm need, um, I want to say it's six to seven months um, to mature, <laughs> then you know that you, 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 you're in the clear and you can give that if, if even need be, like I said, you could just test the dog and see, and maybe you, um, maybe you don't need it at all. And that would be fine. Um, the other thing is the flea and tick. You can give flea and tick. Do not give the oral flea and tick stuff. Okay. It's very bad for your dog. Um, I don't even like to give the topical stuff unless there's a flea infestation. Sometimes there are flea infestations. We actually had one this year. It was pretty bad. And so I did put my dogs on a topical flea and tick, but I highly recommend that instead of putting pesticides on your dog every month, that you treat your yard. Okay. Treat your yard and make sure that um, that you're, that you're, you're keeping it in check. There are organic ways you can do that. You can use nematodes. Nematodes are um, something that eat flea larvae. They live in the same places that flea larvae live, which is in damp, dark soil in the shade. And so there are ways that you can manage a potential flea population, both chemically and organically, um, without needing to put 
monthly flea and tick on your dog. Um, but having said that, the topical is the lesser of the two evils, and I highly recommend that you never, ever, ever give your dog that oral stuff. Um, yes, there are a certain amount of population of dogs that will be fine, but there's also enough dogs that are not fine that the FDA put out a release about those. And so, and I really want you to think about it. Would you put, you know, would you do it to yourself? You know, human beings can get stuff. Um, we, we can get tick-borne illness. We can get, we can get all kinds of, we get lice. Like, we get all kinds of stuff. But you don't see them marketing pesticides to put on your body every month in the hopes that you don't get stuff like that. They only do it to people who have dogs. Psh. They only do it to people that have dogs because they know that people don't really think clearly when it comes. Psh. Quit, Frankie. Um, that they don't, they don't think clearly when it comes to um, dogs. They don't, they don't think of them the same way and um, like they should. And so it, they're, they're just able to push stuff that they're not able to push on, on, on children. Um, but I'm here to tell you that it's not any better if you would not put a monthly pesticide on your body, on your, on your child's skin and make them ingest something, then I really recommend that you not do it for your dogs. Um, as far as tick-borne illness, I don't know of a single tick-borne illness that cannot be cured with doxycycline. So it's not like humans where they have, um, you know, like... Um, uh, dogs don't get chronic Lyme like people do. Um, I don't know why, but I was reading some stuff about it. And there's also a guy, a veterinarian that did a video on it. And they, they, they're assuming that it has to do with the fact that dogs have evolved to live around ticks longer. And so they don't have the, um, same, um, effects that humans can get with tick-borne illness. So even if your dog was to contract it, simple antibiotics, doxycycline, you're good to go. Um, what else? Um, also make sure that if you're getting a Corso puppy that you do not feed a food over 26% protein. The reason for that is because you will cause accelerated growth. Now that does not mean that your dog is somehow going to be bigger than it would have been. It means that it's going to get to how big it would have been faster. So your dog will only ever be as big as its genetics will say it's going to be. But when you cause accelerated growth, you cause <clears throat> you cause um, way too much stress on the joints at too young of an age and the joints that are growing and the bones that are growing faster do not have, have the same density that they would have if you would have allowed the dog to grow slow. And so it often leads to things like arthritis and orthopedic issues. And so don't do it, okay? And there's a lot of large breed puppy foods that are marketed for large breed puppies that are not. They have way too... They have way too much protein, and um, not only will they cause that accelerated growth, but they will also cause a condition that we call bowing over, which is where the front legs will kind of bow like this forward. Um, and then I've, I've actually quit giving any kind of rubber or plastic toy. I just recently thought about it, and I, it just hit me, and I was like, you know what, why? If we're all talking about microplastics and this and that and blah, 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 then why are we giving our dogs plastic to chew on? Like, what, what, what kind of, how did we go from giving them a very natural thing where we've been convinced that raw hides are bad because they can cause choking hazards as though none of those other plastic things or rubber things can also cause, you know what I mean? It's just, oh, you bad dog. Oh, She's, well, and she just came in the house, so we're just now starting. Bad dog. Will you get the mop? Y'all know that they found microplastic in women's breast milk? It's, I think it's, um, I think it's around the corner. Oh, okay. Yeah, they found microplastics in um, women's breast milk. Yeah, and so if we're talking about microplastics and this and that, then I don't want my dog chewing on plastic. I mean, that's just what it is. Hurry! Well, that ought to tell me that my house is uneven. Look at it. It's rolling, 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 rolling. Just rolling, 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 rolling. I got I may need to get it um, leveled. Bro, that is the worst mop job I've ever seen in my life. I had to get it up first so that um don't trust him. She did not get that from her mama. Go ahead and rinse it out and do it again. Dude, that's I'm just a little bit. 
That's what you sound like. Love you. Anyway, um, so yeah, I've been giving the cow hooves. They love to chew on it, and I've been giving them pig ears. They love it. It's great. It is healthy and um, great for their teeth. Sit. And um, are you you're gonna embarrass yourself? Sit. That dog don't know how to sit. 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 Almost. Almost. I never taught her to sit. Sit. What? I mean, she was in the early generation. She should. No, I never taught her to you sit. You taught preacher how to sit. Yeah, preacher. Because he's a big old dog, sit. and I needed to be able to control sit. him. Ever since Good. I learned. Mm, Ever since I learned that you don't want to teach show dogs to sit, I don't teach my dogs to sit anymore. You had velocity before you were showing them, though. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just never, I don't know. I just didn't. I don't think she's been touched. I've, got, I've gotten lazier the more dogs I've gotten. It's just, it is what it is. So it hasn't been as important. Are they both chewing on it? Oh! oh. <laughs> Look at that tail up. Oh! You won't let her have it? Wow. Have she's tough. You just get it, Velocity. You just get that toy? You gonna get the toy? She's, she's like, nah. She's gonna see if I have one. She, she wants to take it, but she's not gonna, like, fight her for That is it. so funny. <laughs> Look at her tail up. That is so funny. She's like, nah, I'm not giving it up. I ain't got nothing for you, Velocity. Look. She's like, I'm not giving it up. You're so cute. Move, Velocity. Move, she's stop. Rude. So this is that really pretty colored girl. Oh, she just broke it. Well, she tried to. No, I heard it crack. Yeah, a little bit. They have like little edges. What do they taste like? Not obviously. Um, yeah, you know, Savannah, I don't think I've ever tried them. No, but like to the dogs, does it taste like that's weird? Do they just love it? And you can't tell me that that doesn't have like collagen and stuff in it that they need. I bet you money that this is actually very good for them. And they've just convinced us that it's not. I'm telling you, man, it's it's a, it's a problem. Here, Velocity. It's a, it's a. It's a big problem. I'm gonna show you. If I could show you here how, if it isn't, come on, there we go. You can see how she's got these, um, you can see the lightness under the coat. Anyway. So, um, those are some of my, those are some of my pointers of kind of, of what to do, um, and how to, and how to handle it. Um, so don't let them over vaccinate your puppy and don't do boosters either. After your initial vaccinations, don't do boosters. I mean, you have to do your rabies, but don't do any of that other nonsense. Um, don't, don't, don't let them do it to you. So, um, anyway, that's it. I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk at you later. Bye.